Medieval castles are fantastic and beautiful buildings that contain many stories. There are often elaborate defences and gatehouses that were used to protect the castle, with guards stationed on top. However, with all these people based at the castle, including the rich and wealthy owners, where on earth would they go to the toilet? How primitive were medieval toilets? You'll actually be surprised. So join us today as we look at medieval toilets, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Castles often had dozens of people inside of them, from guards to cooks and servants, to those kings and queens who often visited. If there was a royal visit, all of the stops would be pulled out to ensure great luxury was had, but the most important question is where did all of those people during the medieval period go to the toilet? Well, if the people lived in towns, chances are that they would relieve themselves in buckets and throw them either onto the street or in the local river or stream the same stream that they would wash their clothes in and also bathe in at times. But toilets were around in the medieval times. One thing to remember though is that plumbing and sewers are a more modern development, so despite the toilets being around, the waste would not be taken away in a sanitary way. Firstly, toilets had a number of different names in the medieval period. They were known most commonly as the privy chamber, or a privy or a garderobe. They were also referred to as a gong house, and even in some cases, hilariously a golden tower. The term garderobe also meant cupboard, but it was mostly just a small space where people could go and do their business. Toilets in castles were often very small, and if you visit a castle today and peer down a dark corridor off a room, chances are you'll enter the toilet. Toilets in castles were usually built into the walls so that they overhang the castle's wall. This was so that any waste would fall clear of the wall itself, would then fall either into a moat or onto the mot, the hill which a keep was sat upon. This meant that if there was a moat that was isolated, it could often get very smelly and infected. Some castles had toilets built of large rooms, such as great halls, for the convenience of the guests, so if there was a banquet, someone could just visit the cupboard or toilet just off the hall, do their business and then return back. Some castles such as Corf Castle in Dorset were more advanced, and had latrine shafts built into them. This was a shaft in which waste would fall, and then find its way either into the courtyard or outside the castle's walls, falling down the shaft. The protruding masonry was considered more backwards, but the use of the latrine shaft could be more sinister. If the castle was being besieged, then an unfortunate enemy soldier could be ordered to climb up the dirty shaft to try and breach entry. This even happened in France at the end of the 12th century. Toilets were often on the outside wall, where the shafts were all then sent to a collection point. Dover Castle, which sits guarding the English Channel, was built following the Norman Conquest, and it had a cesspit in the bottom of one wall to collect all of the waste, and then this could be easily emptied. Some ground floor buildings also had these features, and waste was collected by local farmers to be used as fertiliser for their crops. As castles transitioned into larger stone structures, toilets were also expanded, and often a number of them could be found off bedrooms and other chambers and key rooms. Often these toilets would then empty into the moat, causing a rather bad smell and a huge collection of waste. Inside the castle, toilets were found by going through a small passage, and many were not often fitted with doors for privacy. A narrow passageway often led to the toilet, either a hole in the floor or with a seat or a wooden structure built over the hole. This was for the higher classes, and servant toilets would simply just have a hole in the floor. There were also pairs of toilets that were found and were separated by a wall, and these would share the same waste shaft too. If someone inside the castle was important, for example the priest, often they could be given their own toilet, and some of these were en suite, and were built just off their private quarters. Toilet seats were made from wood and covered the hole, and hay, grass and moss was used for toilet paper. One abbey in England almost burned down as during the 12th century a candle was lit close to the hay used in the toilet for wiping and it caught fire almost burning down the monastic building. Toilets often let fresh air in too and it often came up the chute. For example at Warwick Castle if you dare to peer into the hole and the chute then you'll get blasted by a breeze of cold air. Some toilets close to the great halls were often also covered in herbs and flowers to make a better smell. You would not want the King and Queen of England eating their dinner in a lavish banquet and the smell of the privy chamber wafting in whilst he eats his beef. Toilets were cleaned by simply throwing water down the shaft 
but in some cases water from the guttering was gathered and then used to flush it. Toilets inside castles stunk terribly, and in some cases even the King of England commented on them and paid for things to be improved. For example, Henry III commented on the Tower of London's facilities, and it was said that, since the Privy Chamber in London is situated in an undue and improper place, whereof it smells badly, we command you on the faith and love by which you are bound unto us, that you in no wise omit to cause another privy chamber to be made in such more fitting and proper place that you may select there, even though it should cost a hundred pounds, so that it may be made before the feast of the translation of St. Edward, before we come hither. One last thing to consider too is that urinals were also built into some guard towers to ensure that soldiers did not spend too much time away from their station. But medieval toilets were incredibly primitive, but in some cases were rather interesting. The use of the toilet seat and so on is common as it is today, but the real issue during the Middle Ages was where the waste would go. Often we have this perception of castle moats being filled with crisp water to show the beauty of the castle, but the reality is that they were foul-smelling and often brown with the waste. But what is interesting is the fact we view the Middle Ages as backwards, but in some senses it wasn't too bad. Things were worse in poorer areas, as they did not have the luxury of toilets. Instead, people would visit the local river and stream to relieve themselves. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.